A recent report from the IPCC says that wind, solar and EVs can prevent catastrophic climate change. This is in direct contrast with this whole idea that we're going to overload the grid and that electricity is bad. Now, in another recent report, energy experts said that EVs will not overload the US or the French or the German electrical grids. And in addition to that, on the same exact day, Portugal brought forward their 80% clean energy target to 2026 from 2030. Plus, we learned that the majority of electricity added globally last year to the world's grids was actually renewable energy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Since we started this channel just under 11 months ago, we've made 1,300 videos about, well, pretty much majority of it is the good stuff that's happening in the world. What is that? Renewable energy is going to power EVs. EV batteries don't get thrown out like the media wants you to believe. They get recycled. Eventually, we'll have a closed cycle grid when we've mined enough metals from the earth for those batteries, and we won't need to do any more mining. Because, as I've reported on this channel on numerous occasions, battery recyclers can now recycle almost everything in the battery. And some of them even claim that these recycled metals in batteries are more valuable than mined metals, which is crazy. Michelle Lewis has reported on The Electric that in the landmark Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report released yesterday, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news EVs and clean energy can help us limit climate change. Maybe even stop it. The bad news from this report is that we are on the brink of missing the opportunity to avoid catastrophic climate change. The report states that global emissions must peak by 2025 for the chance to limit temperature increases to the 1.5 Celsius goal set out in the Paris Agreement global emissions. Must then fall by 43% by 2030 as well as a reduction in methane emissions of around 33% from 2019 levels. The good news from my view is that that will happen. Yep, I know I'm an optimist. I know many of you think I'm wrong, but lately I have had a strange habit of being right about certain things. I've made a few predictions that I've gotten wrong. I made a fair few that I've gotten right. And this is one where I'm pretty convicted. I'm pretty strong on this. I've watched a lot of videos, read a lot of articles about what's happening with renewable energy and how quickly coal plants will be disrupted because they are mostly, about 90% of them, making a loss. You heard that right, about 90%. I'll have a video coming soon about that. Coal plants are run so incredibly inefficiently that battery, solar, and wind will be so much cheaper to run within the next few years that they will have no chance of competing on a purely economic basis. Purely economic basis, that's what's important. So the great news is we already have the technology and the financial ability to globally slash emissions by 2030. IPCC Working Group 3, 6 assessment report, that's a mouthful, which was approved by 195 member governments of the IPCC is at 3,765 pages long, a literal Bible. And I don't think anyone's read all of it. But anyway, it's a huge and comprehensive report. Ho Sung Lee, chair of the IPCC, said the report is a grave and mounting threat to our well-being and a healthy planet. Our actions today will shape how people adapt and nature responds to increasing climate risks. Now, I don't think, I'm not telling you this because I want you to feel bad, I want you to feel negative. I firmly believe that, yes, it is going to be okay. I strongly believe that based on all the research that I've done. And I have spent thousands of hours researching this issue. Now, the electric says this report isn't just doom and gloom. It combines strategies to adapt to climate change with actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to support sustainable development for everyone. And that's what they're highlighting today. It asserts that building wind and solar is the most impactful and cheapest way to keep temperatures to 1.5 Celsius. Business Green says, since 2010, there have been sustained decreases of up to 85% in the costs of wind and solar energy as sharp falls in the cost of batteries for storage in electric vehicles 
while an increasing range of policies has helped tackle deforestation, boost energy efficiency, and accelerate the rollout of renewable energy sources, the report points out. Now, there's other things that have been really big advantages over the last decade that people just don't realize, such as drones that can shoot seeds into the ground. So rather than having to plant seeds manually, we can now shoot millions of seeds into the ground at a very, very low cost. This is happening to reforest massive areas of land in the world globally. In addition to that, key points from this report said, global carbon dioxide emissions felt need to fall by 24 gigatons or 43% by 2030 for a 1.5 Celsius pathway. It shows that wind power has the potential to deliver 3.9 gigatons of emission savings and solar 4.5 gigatons by 2030. Combined, they can provide over one third of the total emissions reductions necessary by 2030. The report also proves my point that half of emissions reductions from wind and solar will actually save money compared to business as usual. That's why business will change, not because um, they want to do the right thing, because businesses don't usually change for that reason. They normally change for economic reasons to survive. Wind and solar supported by battery storage will be far cheaper. That's the key reason. And I've spoken about the decross, the decreases in the cost of batteries over the last year. Importantly, I've also talked about sodium battery storage. I've talked about other forms of battery storage, lithium ion phosphate battery storage, and some other interesting types of thermal battery storage. I'll put some links in the description below to that battery storage if you want to check that out. Now, this other report, right, shows you what is happening in many countries around the world. I should point out, that this is not the best case. There are other better cases than this, but this is just one that was reported on recently. Portugal has brought forward their 80% energy target to 2026 from 2030. So Portugal's new Socialist Party majority government has moved its target to being four years earlier. Now, very interestingly, it's not gonna cost it more money, it's gonna cost it less, which proves my point, right? The new government says that its plan should result in more than 25 billion euros of both private and public investment in the next 10 years, which will lead to significant cost savings. Portugal is currently one of Europe's clean energy leaders as it gets 60% of its electricity from renewables. So it doesn't have to increase all that much over the next four years to go from 60 to 80%. Cabinet Minister Mariana Vieira da Silva said, Portugal has already taken very significant measures in the energy transition but the evolution and duration of the war in Ukraine must necessarily imply new measures. Now, to give you an idea on what they're doing, the country has 7.3 gigawatts of hydroelectric capacity and 5.6 gigawatts of onshore wind farms, which together represent 83% of its total installed capacity. In addition to that, Portugal is a very sunny place, right? It currently has 1.5 gigawatts of deployed solar as of 2021, and they're aiming to increase that to nine gigawatts by 2030, which should be relatively easy in a country where solar, it would just work so, so, so well. Now, finally, I wanna finish with this good news story. The lights are not gonna go out. Energy experts are saying that EVs won't overload the US electrical grid. According to research teams and engineers via the electric, Engineers at multiple US energy laboratories say that the acceleration of EV adoption will not reach any sort of tipping point in which charging EVs will overwhelm the electrical grid. In fact, experts say the entire industry is well aware of the imminent electrical load coming from to the US grid, and they are adapting daily to support a future dominated by EVs. Now, obviously, there's a common issue here, right? This is talked about by people who are against EVs, or say even some people who are for EVs. They say things like, Oh, but where can you charge? Oh, that's a problem. I can't go on a road trip. Or, 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 or we're going to overload the grid. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be devastating. The grid's going. To, the grid can't survive. This is terrible. And honestly, I think this comes from people who are, I wouldn't say realists. I wouldn't say optimists. I'd say pessimists. They kind of don't think, is there a solution? They think problem, problem, problem. So clearly one of the biggest questions that are posed online constantly and by just general people in the population is how are we going to charge all these EVs on the electrical grid? We'll overwhelm it. It'll be disastrous. Well, interestingly, about a hundred years ago, most Americans didn't have electricity. So what do you think's happened over the last hundred years, right? Well, 
Obviously, the grid has had to adapt to the massively increased energy needs. The same thing's happening right now. Since its origin in the US in the 1920s, the electrical grid has grown and evolved to avoid energy monopolies and more recently promoted more forms of renewable energy. Now, fortunately, the Biden administration has taken a multilateral approach to these electrical grid updates to support a future US fleet dominated by EV. So kudos there, Biden. This past February, President Biden announced the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program promising $5 billion in funding to implement over 500,000 EV stations on highways over the next five years. But this is just part of a plan to provide $2.5 billion in grants to expand charges on the electrical grid for EVs in rural and underserved communities. So the US electrical grid actually has a huge amount of new funding coming online. And energy experts say that that will be enough to expand the grid at the rate that's needed. In fact, a recent report from Physics Today interviewed several energy experts from an acclaimed research laboratory in the US who all agree that there is no foreseeable threat to the electrical grid being overloaded by EVs. Now, I like this quote from The Electric. Some of them, like Matteo Moratori, who leads a research team at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, are frustrated by social media posts spreading lies about EVs and their negative effect on the electrical grid. And I've seen this comment before, right? How much power does an air conditioner use? How much power does it use, right? If you have a 7.5 kilowatt air conditioner, that's a huge drain on the grid. But no one's saying, right, that we can't have aircon, are they? Now, this is the point that Moratori says. He says an increased demand from EVs charging on the grid should be no different from the past when air conditioners became commonplace in homes and businesses. It happened very quickly. Furthermore, Moratori says that utilities are excited for this zero emissions transition because selling electricity is their business. That's how they make money. Now, according to him, there is zero argument that this steadfast transition towards EVs will add a major demand in the electrical grid's load. He says electricity demand could jump 25% if the country's entire army of 290 million cars and trucks went electric, but that realistically won't suddenly happen overnight. Now, interesting, according to Moraton, currently EVs account for only 0.2% of grid energy consumption, but they could jump to 24% when a majority of US transportation becomes electrified. However, all of the experts polled say that this will happen gradually over the next decade, meaning the grid can build out as it happens. So all of this is to say that the grid energy providers are well aware of what's about to happen. They aren't stupid. They do the research. They can see all the pre-orders for EVs. They can see what's happening in China. They can see what's happening in Europe. They can see what's happening in the UK. They know what's about to happen. And many of them are planning on providing this extra energy so that they can make more money. Makes sense, right? So that's the good news. You don't have to worry about the grid. It's gonna be okay. And fortunately, the majority of the extra energy being added to the US grid right now is actually renewable energy. So that's the good news. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.